Is it safe? Is it safe? Is it safe? Is it safe? Yeah, I'm Hoople's cat. I absolutely hate going to the dentist. Sometimes I go four or five years without a hygiene appointment because I cannot take the pain that dentists sometimes inflict. In fact, going to the dentist makes me want to run like it's the 1990s again. In the last five years, have you or your loved one been to a dentist? I would argue in a long-term disaster where society falls, dentistry is actually highly likely to be required and high risk if you can't have it. So what's your tooth extraction plan? For most people, going to the dentist is not their favorite thing to do, but nobody expects to lose their life in a dentist chair. Channel 2 Investigates has discovered Texas patients who died after routine procedures, and their dentists are still practicing. Okay, most dentists won't kill you, but I do know one person that became severely brain damaged from uh, anesthesia in a dental chair. I still have my wisdom teeth. They can come out if there's a problem. Dental extraction is a very common phobia. It's been used as a trope in entertainment for decades both for comedy value and also for horror value, and sometimes for both. What are you going to do where there's no dentist and when there's no dentist? The magical tooth theory is unlikely to help you. And using pliers on yourself is wrong for a whole bunch of reasons and is not recommended. If society falls, we will long for the old days of dentistry, where magic was done to our mouths, where everybody had gleaming teeth, unlike mine. So what are you going to do? Tie a piece of string to the loose tooth? Attach it to a door? And kick the door shut? We're going to tie Emily's tooth with floss because it's so loose. <laughs> and close the door so it comes out. All right, so mommy tied the string around the tooth. We're gonna to try to extract Emily's second baby tooth. And she doesn't wanna do it with her hands, so we're gonna do it this way, so it doesn't even hurt. And do you want me to do it, or do you wanna shut the door? Um, I want, I want to do it. Do you wanna do it? Yeah. Let okay. Emily do it. Now look, stand over here. I'm so scared. And when you're ready, just kick that door with the bottom of your foot like this. Keep your head up. Keep your head up a little bit. And then you kick it. Head up. Okay, one. Careful. Move back two. Three. Go. There it goes. Let me see that tooth. Take Woo there is it. Look at that. Emily, I thought was very brave here, but I must point out to you, for adult teeth, this is absolutely something you should never, ever do. You'll cause serious damage to the tooth and the jaw and probably nerves, and it probably won't work. Now, if you put a rotting tooth in your mouth for a long, long time and the pain and infection and discomfort of that, it might work. But in that case, you can just plop it out yourself. If you're lucky, you'll be a prepper that's got dental tools, or you'll know a prepper that's got dental tools, or you'll find a hygienist or a dentist in the local area that can fix it all for you. But I don't think you should rely on getting a dentist or a hygienist if society falls. Even if you have the tools, pain-free dental extraction will not exist if society falls. I focus on many things, but I haven't really focused on dentistry. Requiring dentistry is highly probable, and not being able to provide it is high risk if society doesn't exist. I assume all of my viewers have this and this. If you don't, you need to get some. Just to let you know, this is the fancy version of zinc oxide paste and clove oil mixed together. It's temporary. In the book and the film, Leave the World Behind, young Archie lost quite a lot of his teeth. They became loose and they just literally fell out. I'm not gonna cover making your own dentures in this video, and I probably never will. That's a skill. I think you just have to learn to suck it up. So you're eating black walnuts and you broke your tooth, and all of this stuff that you did have has now ran out. What are you gonna do? What you should never do is just reach for ordinary pliers and hope for the best. There's much safer ways of dealing with this emergency after the fall of society, as we'll see. First, you need to make a few liters of sterile normal saline. This is absolutely important, and this is also a great thing to look at and know and be able to do for any medical emergency. Then you have to study the anatomy. Study the problem. Do you need to cut the gum? 
Can you remove bits of tooth if it breaks on removal? Will you need sutures, stitches? The entire tooth has to be removed. This includes the roots of the tooth and parts of gum if the gum is infected. Home remedies, as I point out to you, just because it's online doesn't mean it's true. Of these four, only clove oil is of any use, and that's an analgesic. It does not in any way prevent tooth decay, nor does onion, garlic, or ginger and black pepper. Please don't try any of this at home. I'm showing you what I would do in my circumstances with a lot of thought for myself if I couldn't get to a dentist and I had a major problem with my teeth. I might have to do this on myself. To be honest, I'm not sure I could. And I'm not even sure I could talk Kitty into doing it for me, but at least I had the tools to do it on Kitty. As I said, never use the string and door method on an adult. It's absolutely a really bad idea. The jaw damage can be terminal in terms of being able to eat food and focus and work after grid down. It's okay for a child like Emily and her sister, but the tooth was designed to fall out to let the adult ones emerge. Adult teeth must never be pulled out using string. Now, if you haven't prepared properly, pliers might well be your only option, and you might have to do this. The way it's shown on movies and TV is completely wrong. Watch this video. If you have to use pliers, at least know how to do it properly. But if you can, spend a few dollars today to give yourself an advantage. The risks of removal are many. But leaving a broken and or infected tooth in place risks a lot, especially if you can't ever get to a dentist. It's going to cause incredible pain, it's going to stop you eating properly, and worst case, you're going to lose the whole jaw. I'm going to get Beth to show how to remove a tooth, and it's really important you listen to what she's saying. I'm going to do a blow-by-blow, -blow, very slow explanation of how to do a tooth extraction in a disaster later on in the video. But this is some basic information, and it's kind of interesting what she's saying here. It's not what you think it is. So I'm going to show you how we do extractions. Here are some extraction forceps. There's different ones depending on which tooth you're taking out. These ones are for upper molars. Our teeth here are metal ones, so we can put as much pressure on them as we want. They're held in with a resin to simulate the ligaments so we can wiggle and move them. I'm going to be extracting this first molar on the left here and people think that pulling out teeth is a lot of pulling when actually it's pushing so i am pushing apically so towards the top of the root pushing upwards and then gently rotating that tooth around the roots and when i think that it's wobbling just enough i can then pull that tooth out and deliver it Luckily, so towards the cheek. And there we have our extracted teeth. Push, don't pull. Push and then rotate gently, 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 side to side, and then more and more. And when the tooth's loose enough to come out, pull it in the direction the tooth wants to go. If there is no dentist, you're gonna need these four basic instruments. Probe, an elevator, and a number 150 or 151, forceps. Number 150, number 155. Reading, I found that number 150 or a number 23 cow horn one will do all of the teeth. Number 23 cowpers. There are about 10 specific forceps for the different types of tooth, different angles of the head, but a number 23 or a number 150 should be able to do all of the teeth. What you are going to need are extraction forceps, narrower headed. So you can get in there and remove the broken teeth that's remaining inside and possibly bits of root. Having scalpels available to gently cut part of the gum if you have to is a great idea. But also a scalpel is a good idea for a lot of other things in grid down. Okay, we now have all the tools we need and now we need a victim. Let's pull out their teeth. Hold on. At a minimum, we need a gel. The gel on the gum on both sides quite firmly for about five to 10 minutes before you start this procedure. Expect to have to stop the procedure and reapply the gel continually throughout the procedure. It's still gonna hurt a lot. You also need to buy or print out this book. It might upset some of you, but you're actually gonna have to read it several times and take notes and have a good think about it before you ever try to do a tooth extraction. If you have the medications and the technology and the skills to actually inject the gum, you need to do so. What you're going to be doing is nerve blocks. A nerve block for the top of the mouth is different from a nerve block on the bottom of the mouth. And the nerve block for the molars at the back is again different. If you have the analgesic and the skills and the medication to do this, go for it. But remember, there's three different ways of injecting depending on which tooth you're extracting. You're going to inject sterilely and slowly. If you get this wrong, you can easily kill your victim. 
Never inject into pus or swollen areas of the gum. You're going to try and give two injections in a disaster. Be used to handling injections and practice on objects, not patients. And don't practice on dogs either, they'll probably bite you. Pull the plunger slightly. If you notice any blood appearing in the syringe, stop what you're doing, remove, recite. The reason being, if you put this stuff intravenously, you can stop their heart. All metal equipment needs to be boiled in water for 30 minutes. That pot has to have a lid on it to sterilize them appropriately. And this is a rolling boil for 30 minutes. You have to assess and inject. You're going to get one or two injections. Like I said, I'd probably be going for two in any disaster scenario. The more you can make the mouth numb, easier this is going to be until you learn how to be a proper dentist. Inject behind the tooth to be removed and wait five minutes. The lower jaw is harder to numb. The whole side has to have a nerve block. There'll be no chewing or drinking, etc. until the block is over. That's going to take a couple of hours. Consider a bite block to stop them biting you. Seriously. I don't think I'd stick my fingers in somebody's mouth to try and remove a broken tooth and grit down and not expect them to possibly bite my finger off. If you're removing a tooth in the lower jaw, the nerve block has to be of the entire jaw. However, if it's an upper tooth you're removing, you actually do a nerve block of the individual tooth. Now, you've probably never injected anybody and hit a bone. I have on a couple of occasions. You feel an electric jolt up your own arm. It's very noticeable. It's awful. Your patient rarely feels it. Pull out, recite. You have to wait at least five minutes for all blocks to work. If you're removing a lower tooth, you don't have to inject inside of the mouth. If you're doing an upper removal, you have to. Children are not small adults. But this information is good for small adults who are actually acting like children. And frankly, I'd be terrified if you're taking my tooth out. Use a probe to make sure the nerves are blocked before you attempt to use the forceps or the scalpel. Remember, this is not a stat procedure. You can restart this or reschedule this for another day. Once you've had a nerve block, make sure they avoid things like lifting or eating or chewing or drinking for an hour or two. I'd argue in grid down, if you're not trained for this properly and professionally before grid down and have the right equipment, it's risky for everybody. Take your time, have a think. However, most dentists are going to use lidocaine 2%. In fact, they're using an expensive thing, and there's a list of them coming up. Most of the analgesic injections for dentistry have the analgesic, say lidocaine 2%, and a bit of epinephrine. The epinephrine is a powerful vasoconstrictor. It's actually adrenaline. This is why you really don't want to accidentally inject this into a vein or an artery, because it will kill them. What it does is it reduces bleeding. If you've got the injection, remember the clock is running once you've injected. 30 minutes or so, maybe 40 minutes, that's about it. So you might want to do a dry run about all the proceeding and what you're going to do, what equipment you're going to use, and how you're going to access it without actually doing it, without actually injecting. A dry run is what I would recommend time and time again for you before tooth extraction, unless you get very familiar doing it. And I'll warn you, if you get good at this, a lot of people are going to want your skills and grid down. If you can hypnotize people, please do so. Think about anything that you can use to cause pain to be reduced and anxiety to be reduced in the victim of your dentistry. As much as we all like cutting people, a cut of the gum is not necessarily required and often isn't required if you plan what you're doing carefully. Pressure can be intense. Warn the person you're operating on each and every time before you do anything at all. Don't say, I'm just going to do this and do it. Say, I'm going to press down now on the back tooth. You'll feel it pressing up into your jaw. Speak calmly, slowly, take your time. For those of you who are insane and thinking of getting a screwdriver and a hammer to knock out a bad tooth, please don't do so. Such forcible extractions often cause severe jaw breaking and nerve damage around the area, not just to the tooth that you're victimizing here. Again, and I can't stress this enough, please have this book in hard copy either as a download or a real book and read it and read it before you ever try any of this stuff. Never do any of this stuff if there's dentistry available. So let's take out my tooth. Sterilize everything first. Like I said, boil it for 30 minutes in water with a lid on it. Then let it cool. Follow these eight steps carefully. Think about them. As I said, having done a dry run is gonna be a good idea. Easier said than done, but get and maintain the person's trust. If you can inject them for pain relief, as previously outlined, please do so. If not, use a gel or clove oil. Reapply it often during the procedure. In a disaster, find a dentist or a dental hygienist or a veterinarian. Most family doctors and even surgeons will actually have no idea at all how to safely remove a tooth. They will try to extract it by cutting or pulling it out rather than pushing it into the jaw. Do not attempt to do a tooth extraction unless you really have to do so. Question and assess 
all the time. Think about this, talk to the person, figure out how we're going to do it, where we're going to do it, when we're going to do it, what tools we need, how we're going to progress with this. Do they have any risk factors? Do they have any problems? Do they have any concerns? This will really, really hurt. There are actually five at risk types of patient. Bleeders, and yes, redheads are bleeders. People with heart disease, are they fat? People who are allergic to the medications you're going to use, kind of test them if you can. Bear in mind you're not going to do the tooth extraction unless it's going to be infected and or they're in incredible pain. Are they a diabetic? There won't be that many diabetics floating around in grid down because they'll be pretty much on a vegan diet or they'll have died. But their wound healing is going to be difficult. Anybody in the last month of pregnancy, try to use antibiotics if you can and then do the extraction once they've delivered the baby. I would argue I would try not to do tooth extraction in an emergency on anybody who's pregnant. But if you're going to do so, do it early. Again, take your time. Plan it out a dry run. Handle the instruments as if you're doing it. Talk a lot. Don't ask questions. I hate it when dentists do that. This familiarizes both yourself and the patient with what you're going to do and when you're going to do it. It also reassures the patient that you really are taking this seriously. Get a good light. You may have to use sunlight and that's okay so you can wait for a very sunny day. Position them well. Is it an upper or a lower tooth? How, what's the best position you can put them in? It's going to be comfortable for you to wrestle with that tooth for maybe 20 minutes with good light on them. Gently push the gum away from the tooth on both sides of the tooth. Do not ever go underneath the actual tooth with this instrument. Consider loosening, but this is a skill. I'd be hesitant to do it. Get the end of the forceps as close to the gum line as you possibly can. Make sure it is absolutely tight as anything on the tooth itself. Then you push the tooth into the jaw. You're not pulling. And rock that tooth gently side to side, getting more and more side to side. How many roots does the tooth have? You can read an anatomy book or you can take your time. Myelis is not the answer here. Have a look, have a think. The loose tooth will show you the direction it actually wants to leave by. Avoiding jaw damage is important, so don't be pulling a tooth out against the way the tooth wants to go. The tooth won't leave, keep rocking it until it comes out. Using the number 23 cow horn forceps has some specific uses and risks. If the tooth shatters, get all the bone fragments out. If the root is not pulled out cleanly, try to remove it. This will not be easy, nor is it absolutely essential, but it is essential to remove all bits of flesh and all bits of bone that are in the empty socket. Bleeding is both good and bad. You want to stop the bleeding, but you do not want to remove any blood clots in the new hole. Suturing should be avoided. Without injections, I'm not sure the patient will tolerate it, but if you have the right sutures, here's how to do it. Aspirin and NSAs like naproxen and Advil will increase bleeding, so don't use them. Use Tylenol only, and then follow these post-op guidelines. So well done, you've done your first dental extraction. What could possibly go wrong? Well, you may have broken the roots. If the roots are hanging from the tooth are rounded at their ends, you did it correctly. If it's a straight cut, a type of a crew cut if you like, it means you've left residual roots inside the jaw. It's going to be nice to try and get them out, have a go at it, but it isn't critical and it's not likely to be tolerated well. Try to avoid pushing things so hard that they go into body cavities. That's a general rule. Clean everything out with normal saline, but leave all the clots on all the holes intact. Really do try to move all the bone and flesh from the hole. Bleeding is to be expected. Remember, it's going to look disastrous to most people, including yourself, but it generally won't be that bad. If it's pulsating, you've hit an artery and you're probably going to lose the patient. Bleeding from this will not be a major thing. They'll be spitting up blood for about a day or two, but that's about it. If you leave them with a dry socket, though, that's going to be a major problem down the line for them. If you have a little bit of swelling for a day or two, that's okay. But if it's major swelling and getting bigger, try to do this and then consider antibiotics if you have them. Again, please do not use aspirin in a disaster. Now this depends. You might need to flee. Dentists are not that popular in the here and now. And if you're doing this without anesthetic, you're really probably not going to be that popular. In a disaster, clean and reuse and re-sterilize everything you possibly can. I now have two metal scalpel handles and 20 single-use blades. And grid down, I'm going to clean these and sharpen them and boil them for 30 minutes with the lid on. I'm going to re-sterilize them. The reason being, once these are gone, they're gone. Sure, there's a risk of blood-borne disease. 
but not having the tool available is going to be a bigger risk. But if you take sterilization steps, you should avoid blood-borne disease transmission. So the post-op care, light bleeding is normal for 24 hours. No rinsing, no chewing, no eating, very careful drinking, no straws, no pushing at the site with fingers or a tongue for 24 hours. The jaw is going to be sore for a few weeks. Dry socket is a serious complication of tooth extraction, including traumatic tooth extraction. We tend to want to clean everything, get the blood clot cleaned out, and then it stops bleeding and we think everything's fine. Remember, dry socket is something you do not want. For at least 24 hours, you want a blood clot on the extraction site, even if you have to go in there and make them bleed to achieve it. Do not rinse or clean out the mouth for 24 hours. This is really gonna take people by surprise. They've got blood in the mouth and it feels icky. Sorry, don't be gargling with salt water, any of that stuff for 24 hours. Then you can. You want them to rest for about 72 hours. This means no lifting, no severe walking, no climbing, no bending. Let them rest, really rest from this procedure. So they're only gonna have a soft diet for about 72 hours and no straws for 72 hours again because of dry socket. You're gonna monitor the site and their pulse and temperature carefully. Infection is a threat. Use antibiotics as soon as you can if you think you have a problem. This is likely to be penicillin or ampicillin. They all have risks. You need to know what they are before you start giving them. Once you've extracted the tooth and you made sure there's no residual stuff in the socket, you actually want to gently push the gum and jaw back together again. If there's any tiny breaks in the jaw, you should be able to feel it and make the jaw back in alignment. Strong fingers is a good idea. You're going to put normal saline soap gauze over the socket and get them to gently bite down. Get them to bite down gently for an hour. If it's still bleeding, put another soap gauze on top of the original one and give them another hour. If it's still bleeding at that point, lift off both gauzes and have a think what's going on. For 24 hours post extraction, they're not going to be using toothpaste, they're not going to be gargling, and they're not going to be using a rinse. The gunk in the mouth stays in the mouth. This also means they can't have chewing gum, or chew leaves, or chew sticks, or chew tobacco. No lifting and lots of bed rest for the next 48 hours. So there's lots of antibiotics that can be used for dental extraction, both before them, if they're at risk of infection, and also afterwards if they get an infection. Based upon what I think might happen in grid down for a long extended period, if you have ciprofloxacin, 500 milligrams orally, twice a day for nine days if you feel they have an infection of the jaw or the tooth. If you know they're infected, you want to give them amoxicillin, two grams by mouth, about 60 minutes prior to extraction. And if you have lots of antibiotics, you might want to keep giving them amoxicillin at a lower dose for the next seven days, or you might want to then start ciprofloxacin. Again, it depends on how much antibiotics you have available. That's it for me. This is one thing I wouldn't advise you to ever practice in the real before you need to, and I hope you never have to use it. I absolutely hate dentists. They terrify me. Don't want to use this technique. But if you think about it, falling or getting hit and grid down is very likely to cause tooth injuries. And if the tooth are loose enough to fall out, then that's probably going to be okay. But then think about dry socket. But if you shatter a tooth and it doesn't come out, it's going to be so much pain and it's going to get so infected. But if you can't get to a dentist, what are you going to do? We tend to look at things we can cope with. People spend a lot of money, time and effort prepping for gun battles where they or somebody else is going to die and the more gun battles they have, it's going to be them sooner or later. They spend a lot of time and effort for battle armor and guns and night sights and all of this stuff. But how much effort are they actually spending in dealing with something that's going to cause an absolute calamity for them in grid down and it's highly likely to happen? Well, I hope it never happens to you. Go and see the dentist. I do all the time now, but I have to make myself. Doodles! This has been brought to you by a Sleeping Terry production. A Terry that actually needs dental surgery but is not getting it because he's not that well. If you want to do dental surgery on an animal or a very young child, please try and anaesthetize them. No idea how you're going to do that, but you really probably should. It's going to be far too traumatic for you and for them and very risky. This has been a Wolfie Terry Good Boy production 2024.